What is up my friends? You are welcome along to Monday's News Roundup here on Anfield Agenda and today I'm going to be taking you guys through two stories linking us to a player from France. I'm going to be giving you a bit of an update around the Joel Matip situation and what is going to happen with Sheffield United and their manager. Will he still be in place by the time we play them on Wednesday? So all that and more. But beforehand, it is Monday, so we are being brought to you with thanks to our amazing friends at Oosh.com. Oosh are the home of giveaways, whether it's cars, cash, tech, holidays, or those all-important Liverpool football club packages, Oosh have got you covered. This week, they have a belter of a draw. For €18 Euro entry, and that's before your Anfield Agenda discount that I'll mention in a moment, you can get into the draw for two tickets in the Carlsberg Hospitality Dugout for Liverpool versus Chelsea, 31st of January 2020. You'll get two tickets together seated in the Carlsberg dugout. You will get one night's accommodation at the Ibis Hotel Liverpool City Centre and €300 Euro in Ryanair vouchers or the cash alternative if you so wish. All you need to do is scan the QR code on the screen or go over to oosh.com and use our discount code AA10 and that will get you 10% of any of the draws at oosh.com. Right, look, I did say I had lots to get through so I'm going to keep moving. So the two stories linking us to a player from France. So the news of the player, that's not really going to be a surprise to you. We are being linked once again with a move for Nice's Kefren Thuram. And I wanted to get your thoughts on this because I probably wouldn't have brought it to you if it just came from one newspaper. But it's come from two papers in two separate countries and I'm wondering if there's something to this. So let's read out and start off with our friends, our residents over on that certain island on Bullshit Island, Fajajes, who say... Liverpool continue to be linked with Kefren Thuram of Nice. They go on to say that Liverpool are looking at the France youngster with great interest and they also credit a couple of other clubs, Real Madrid and Juventus in having interest in Kefren Thuram. Now I totally understand Juventus' interest. They also are looking at Calvin Phillips, I believe, from Manchester City as a possible loan there. But uh, Italy have also come to the party and they've been speaking about our interest in Kefren Thuram as well. So Corriero Torino have been saying that the Frenchman would allegedly be priced between 35 and 40 million euro for any club which wants to go in and try to get his services. They say that Nice are currently uh, negotiating with Liverpool over a deal to buy him in January. So I really don't know what's true and what isn't true with all of this. Look, it doesn't take a genius to remind you that we were linked with Kevin Thuram very strongly last summer. But I think we all believe that when we brought in Endo, Gravenberg, Alexis McAllister and Soboslai that maybe that interest had waned. But, according to this outlet and the one in France, Liverpool are very much still, or excuse me, the one in Spain, Liverpool are still very much at the table. Now, he is represented by Rafaela Pimenta, I just want to remind you that, who used to used to be Minareola's agency, but Rafaela Pimenta has taken that over now and represents Kefren Thuram. So, look, if this is true, and Liverpool are really interested in bringing Kefren Thuram to Anfield in January... I'm not against it, same way I wasn't against the idea of Andre. I think Andre may be a better fit, and certainly by the pricing, probably a similar price. Uh, but, again, I don't know if this is lazy from the outlet in Spain and the outlet in Italy. And again, you'll notice that Juventus have been mentioned in both as well as a, an option. So sometimes I wonder, is this outlet trying to big up uh, the player's interest, let's say, oh, Liverpool are at the table for him. So when Juventus or somebody else does sign him, then, oh, look, we managed to battle Liverpool for a signature and won. So truth is, I'd take it with a pinch of salt until we hear something from a Fabrizio Romano or from a Paul Joyce or a James Pearce or a David Ornstein. The all reliables who will let us know if Liverpool are indeed at the negotiating table. And one more final thing on this. If it does become clear that Liverpool are interested, I'd also still take it with a pinch of salt. Because is this a negotiating tactic? Is this Liverpool maybe looking to get Andre in but showing that they have other options if Fulham are pushing for Andre and Liverpool don't want to get drawn into a bidding war? So a lot to weigh up on this one. But again, it's a reasonable link. So I thought I'd bring it to you and let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Moving on to a bit of an update around Joel Matip. We don't have an exact time frame yet, but unlike Diogo Jota and Alison Beckers, this one looks on the outside to be a little bit more serious. So Jurgen Klopp was speaking after the game yesterday, after that remarkable 4-3 victory over Fulham. And he said, we lost Joel today, but we've obviously had no scan yet. After all, you hear and can see that it won't be a short one, uh, said the Liverpool manager. It's his knee, unlucky, but we have to get through this. So... We'll have to wait and see. It did look like a, he was in a lot of discomfort yesterday, Joel Matip. So 
not surprised that Jurgen feels this might be one to uh, to keep him on the sidelines for a little bit longer, which is unfortunate because John Mack had been in very good form and in the last few weeks seemingly was the preferred partner to Virgil van Dijk. But we do have Ibu, we do have Gerald Conza, and we do, of course, still have Joe Gomez. So options there for the manager nonetheless. But yeah, I mean, I hope we see Joel Matip again before his contract runs out because I really hope this isn't long-term enough that that will be the end of his Liverpool career because, remember, he's out at the end of the season contractually. So let's wait and see how this one pans out. But Jürgen's not very hopeful by the sounds of it that it's going to be a short turnaround anyway. So the last bit of news is around Sheffield United and their manager. As you know, we take them on on Wednesday, a game that we will, of course, be doing a watch-along here of on the channel and the preview for that will be going out tomorrow afternoon. But Paul Heckenbottom's future as the Sheffield United manager is in a lot of doubt. Last night, lots of stories were coming out to suggest that he won't, he won't see out the next couple of days, that he will be fired uh, before Liverpool come in. And, of course, that's just typical for us, isn't it? We get the club with the new manager bounce just before we play them. So they went to Burnley, got whooped 5-0. Burnley got to uh, feast on the goal score in front. But then they're going to sack Paul Heckenbottom by the looks of it. But it's who they could bring in to replace him that makes this story extra interesting. Because uh, to say the new manager is a familiar face would be an understatement. Because apparently Chris Wilder is a very, very, very strong contender to take over that role. A role which, of course, he did so well with Sheffield United. Let's wait and see what happens there. Are we going to have the new manager bounce before we play them? Well, look, honestly, even if we do... We should be looking to go to Sheffield United and get the result there without too much of a fuss. I've gone fairly ballsy with my predictions. Uh, I have made a couple of changes. That's why I do want you guys to keep an eye out for that preview tomorrow. But other than that, that's pretty much where we are at with regards to all things Liverpool Football Club at the minute. I don't know about you guys, but I woke up today and I think I must have been smiling in my, in my sleep or something. Because up here, it was all very strained after yesterday's tremendous result and... I don't know about how often you watch Match of the Day and round it back, but I sat there with a big smirk on my face on the sofa last night, watching those glorious goals fly in one after the other. And I'm also agreeing with Trent, his goal. I'm not taking that first goal away from him. I know it came off the crossbar, but for me, it was Trent Alexander-Arnold's goal. And he's got a brace yesterday in my eyes. And obviously, we're going to have the conversation tonight at half past eight on the late night agenda about whether Trent's future should be in midfield or not. So hope you can join us for that one. If you're watching this video before then, hopefully you'll come across. I will be live tonight at half past eight. Look forward to seeing you guys there. Anything you'd like us to cover or any thoughts you have, please let us know in the comment section. Drop a like on the video, but most importantly, please do hit that subscribe button. Closing in on 230k is a big deal for us, so we really appreciate your support. Until then, I will talk to you guys soon. Enjoy yourselves. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.